Our dear Swami has always said, Life is best spent in alleviating pain, assuaging distress, and promoting peace and joy. Can you imagine the pain and distress that is caused by having to escape a dangerous situation? To leave one's home and livelihood behind in a moment's notice, knowing that you may never be able to go back? This is very much the plight of millions of refugees across the world. They are forced to escape and seek shelter in safe havens. They often wait for years seeking long-term solutions like resettlement in a completely new country. Last year, we watched the sad plight of Afghan refugees frantically leave their homeland to escape persecution. We are currently witnessing over 3 million Ukrainian refugees flee war and complete destruction of their cities. Every year, hundreds of thousands of refugee families arrive in cities and neighborhoods near us, holding on to the promise of a new beginning, the courage to rebuild and hope of safety and acceptance. Where, where are you going? Um, not sure for now. Yeah, just hoping because it can be like very short or very long. It's no, no one knows, but we are just hoping. The main purpose of the Sri Satya Sai organization is to help one realize their innate divinity through the practice of divine love in action through selfless service. As the Afghan refugee crisis was escalating, SSSIO created a refugee service core group in the USA with the goal of providing inspiration, direction, and support for Sai centers across the country to take up or expand refugee service projects locally. The Refugee Corps Group recently organized a live workshop on refugee resettlement programs in the U.S. We had the unique opportunity of listening to the resettlement journey experience of an Iraqi refugee and brainstorming various ways in which Sai families can effectively support refugees through a variety of needs and timelines. The Refugee Core Group, which was created as part of an SSSIO USA initiative in response to the tremendous outpouring of love and need through the refugee resettlement program in the US, um, happened towards the end of 2022. Our vision for the Refugee Core Group is to help us experience oneness with our refugee brothers and sisters and children through love and action. Our mission is to assist that selfless service to happen across United States through Satya Sai centers and groups and volunteers. Our immediate goal for this year is to help established Sai models of selfless care and support for the refugees in the communities and do it in a way through partnership with programs and nonprofit agencies that have been dedicated towards refugee resettlement effort for decades, as well as uh, meeting the needs of the refugees in the moment. Meeting the needs is a really key point because, um, and, and it helps us understand how refugee service can be so varied depending on the experience of the refugee. Before we understand that, let's see who a refugee is. A refugee is anyone who was forced to flee their home, home country, sometimes certain areas of their countries, due to persecution, war, or violence. These are people that fear that their beliefs, whether it is religious, political opinion, or sometimes because of race, nationality, is an existential threat for them. And they need, they need to leave that place to find safety. Often refugees leave overnight with the few clothes they have and the few essentials they can pack into a backpack. This can be a very traumatic experience. And often it can take years before refugees find a permanent 
place of resettlement if they are not able to go back to their home countries or cities where uh, they can find safety again. Some of these refugee experiences, like if, did they experience trauma? Did they have to leave with uh, young children? Did they have to leave with elderly parents or grandparents? Did they face violence or poverty or health conditions during their stay in transitional housing or during their travels? Did they have to uh, have dependency on uh, support organizations? What about education? These are all the refugee experiences that come into play when they resettle in a neighboring city like St. Louis or San Diego, and they are looking for help to rebuild a new life. This is not an inexhaustible list by any means, but these are important. Uh, number one, as stated in the definition, a refugee is a refugee because of persecution, and they are forced to flee because of persecution. So you can say that the Ukrainians are currently persecuted by the Russians, no doubt, because they are who they are. They are Ukrainians, and that's that often spending significant times in camps, living in long-term settings with no status. That means no immigration status. It means no status in the country what's in which they are in asylum whatsoever. In fact, it really means that they are landless persons, often suffering significantly because of vulnerabilities due to organized violence, which includes war, torture, and other forms of organized violence, as well as some random violence that can occur in the camps, dire poverty and unhealthy living conditions. Look at the Rohingya, for instance, where they are. Dealing with stress on a constant basis and when and if resettled, facing new stressors associated with acculturation to the new society. In America, it used to be assimilate, become like everybody else. Now it's more like a garden salad and acculturation is really the term. How to adjust to a new culture and a manifold culture at that. And then living with memories of who they were before they fled and of their homeland to which they may never return. And that's especially so for many of the elderly refugees. And we heard Waleed talk about his mom. Uh, we like to look at uh, refugee resettlement in three phases in the core group. Uh, the first is the initial resettlement, which is called reception and placement. The federal agency that is involved here is the U.S. Department of State, which interacts with Homeland Security and also interacts with the U.N., working all over the world with circuit riders, to select the very small percentage of people that ever get resettled to an immigration country like the United States. Walid mentioned that there are only certain countries that are considered immigration countries. Right now, that's about 10 countries around the world of which the US is by far the leader, at least until a few years ago when unfortunately immigration and the refugee program almost shut down, but that's no longer the case. Thank God. This year, approximately 125,000 refugees will come to this country legally. Uh, it's the Bureau for Population, Refugees, and Migration. And this is a public private partnership in this country between those resettlement agencies, also called voluntary agencies, and the communities in which the refugees will uh, end up living. The length of this initial reception and placement is 90 days. And then it switches from the Department of State to the US Department of Health and Human Service and, an, and a specific division in there called the Office of Refugee Resettlement. And this phase, which really begins after the 90th day, um, is focused on case management and support services and particularly employment. That's the goal here is relative, and I emphasize relative, self-sufficiency by getting all the possible breadwinners in the family employed as soon as possible. 
Um, and the voluntary agencies are still involved here. Uh, and the length of this goes, number one, for employment purposes, out to 180 days, six months after arrival. And then potentially to eight months or even one year. The eight months represents the refugee cash assistance that is provided by the federal government to help refugees and their families adjust. It runs out generally at the eighth month, though there are some uh, differences there that uh, including something called a demonstration project, which is a more front loaded approach to the work, which can last out to one year. Um, generally, what's needed here is a lot of this kind of gap support that we already do as an organization. And then finally, there's longer term integration, which is really one year out to five. And generally, when we're talking about acculturating to a new society, it's that five year period that we're really talking about here. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't even happen necessarily within one year. Um, and it particularly doesn't happen when you've been forced to flee like uh, Walid's family was. Um, <clears throat> And this is mostly community-based organizations that are doing this work, which could include us. Uh, types of services during you know, these, all three of the periods actually, there's arrival and welcome. And if you ever get a chance to see a newly arrived refugee family arrive from the gate, from the, at the airport, it's a most thrilling and satisfying experience that you will never forget. Uh, housing, furnishing, and basic necessities are immediately needed. Uh, and then social and language services uh, also are needed and begin to kick in, particularly getting the kids in school, getting necessary health services completed, um, and like I said before, focusing on employment. Um, and then, of course, there are the, there is the need for training and orientation to uh, new types of employment that people may have to learn, like Walid said. Uh, and I mentioned health services already. Uh, ideally, refugee resettlement agencies will help to identify the gaps where we could fill in. Uh, Sci refugee services then and now. Well, then. I did a little research. We've done a lot in Europe, and particularly in France, Italy, Austria, Bosnia, and Serbia, with very different refugee populations, and in other countries around the world, such as Trinidad, Cameroon, and also Thailand. In the USA, historical projects serving refugees have ranged from Bhutan, Nepal, to Somalia, to Laotians, particularly the Hmong, who are the highland Laotian people, and Afghanistan, some of which continue till today. And we had them, many of them represented on the insider lens. Now, uh, we are currently, you know, there are new efforts underway with Afghan evacuees, particularly I am aware of in region one and region 10, and their families, accord, ongoing work with other refugee groups, um, and there may be resettlement from the Ukraine. What types of services have we been doing? Grocery shopping, general material support, uh, organizational support for the voluntary agencies themselves. There was a group of YAs that went into a voluntary agency and organized all of their materials so that the agency could deliver the materials more efficiently. Job development, our SCI tutoring program is particularly ideal for working with refugee youth. And then full sponsorship services for initial resettlement, which really is the, the biggest uh, and most complex task out of all of this, but everything that's on this list is valuable. Uh, these are some tools and resources in the interests of time. Um, I think I will only click on one which is this map. There we go. This is from the Health and Human Services, the Office of Refugee Resettlement. The first one is from the Department of State, and it's similar to this one. 
Um, and then the third link is uh, a, an app that will let you find a refugee resettlement agency by zip code. And so Sister Aparna just clicked on California and there you have it uh, right in front of you, you know, all the emails and uh, phone numbers that you could possibly want by location. Um, when we go out to you know, introduce ourselves to a refugee resettlement agency, uh, we have to be aware, of course, like we do with other partners of our, of our SI principles and what's important for us and what will satisfy the relationship for us as much as for them. Um, and that's, that's a particularly important thing that uh, I think the core group can help with. Next steps for the core group. Uh, we are going to be engaging in website development, initially standalone, but then integrated into the SSSIO USA platform. Most important immediately is resource development and some lists, which we've had requests for already. And I am promising here that some of those will be up within a week uh, on our SharePoint, which we will get out to everybody um, who attended this, uh, this summit with us. Uh, we wanna provide systematic ongoing training and TA to centers and groups, uh, whether that's in the form of, you know, some, some micro trainings or uh, ongoing consultation. Uh, we wanna develop working relationships with select refugee resettlement voluntary agencies. There are nine uh, in, the, in the US they may be a fit, one may be a fit in one location and not in another, depending on the affiliate and how we negotiate and have our conversations with them about what we can do, what they expect from us and what we expect from them. Uh, develop working relationships with ethnic community-based organizations and other nonprofits. Uh, in this day and time where we're out of the traditional mold and there are new organizations that are coming up in the, you know, in the, in the current generation that are different, but still dedicated to refugees. I'm thinking of one in California in particular, um, which is run by one single woman who started a, an entire effort to really provide all kinds of support to refugees. Um, and then finally, but not last, uh, we want to assist and support a, the development of a range of projects from full resettlement to the supportive core services, which focus on sustainability and self-sufficiency to that longer term acculturation uh, period, which, which really involves actual befriending and accompaniment more than anything else. So that's what's on our plate, Siron. SSSIO members across America are engaged in serving refugees in their resettlement journey. Initially, SAI devotees' efforts were focused on furnishing the homes for arriving refugee families and delivering groceries to their doorstep. The families also needed help with managing their finances, such as opening bank accounts and accessing social security. Refugee children were also helped with enrollment in schools tutoring, and ESL lessons. We also help transport them to clinics for general health checkups and immunizations. These are all areas in which SAI devotees can be engaged in service programs. It is our sincere prayer to Swami to bless our goal to establish a vast network of projects throughout the country in service of refugees. We also pray that they experience the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man in their journey to self-reliance and a new life of joy and dignity.